The following is paid programming. Welcome to Something More with Chris Boyd, Certified Financial Planner Practitioner and Founder of Asset Management Resources, LLC, a registered investment advisor firm. We call it Something More because we like to talk not only about those important dollar and cents issues, but also the quality of life issues that make the money matters matter. Here he is, your fulfillment facilitator, your partner in prosperity, advising clients across the country, your host, Jay Christopher Boyd. Welcome to Something More with Chris Boyd. I'm Chris Boyd, Certified Financial Planner Practitioner, and I'm happy to be with you today as we are focused on the next year. It is just about New Year's Eve, and we got a lot to think about when we enter a new year. I'm joined again by Jeff Perry, and also we've got Scott Birmingham, uh, both from our office at Asset Management Resources. Jeff is coming to us from uh, Port St. Lucie, Florida. Scott is coming to us from Nashville, and I'm here in our studios right here in Hyannis uh, in the AMR office. So thanks for being with us. And uh, guys, um, are you ready for a new year? Getting there. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's just it's it's sneaking up on me this year more than usual. I don't know why. I mean, it's the same date on the calendar every year. But yeah. Uh, I know it seems yeah. like the last the, it's been a real rush, a, a big flurry of activity as sure. we move to into year end. But um, I think this is the time of year when um, a lot of important financial planning happens. Uh, this is the time of year when um, generally we, uh, you know, we, we step back, we take stock of things, no pun intended as a financial planner. <laughs> But, uh, you know, we sort of um, assess, reassess, you know, what are some of the things we're doing and what are the goals we have? What should we be doing differently? And I think that's true in our, you know, our health, you know, we thought, oh, I want to lose weight. And then, oh, who doesn't have that as their resolution just about every year, right? But um, one of the things that people often think about is, oh, maybe this is a chance for me to, you know, take a note of what do I have? Uh, where is it? How is it positioned? And um, are there things I should be doing differently? And so that's the focus of this segment that we're gonna talk about. And in a separate segment down the line, we'll also talk a little bit about how AMR can be of help to you in the process. And of course, um, you know, some of the other things that are resolutions and things, not always financial in nature, but so we'll talk about a variety of these things uh, over the course of our program. So in any case, uh, Let's dive in, Jeff. You came across a really great article uh, from Schwab that had uh, really some important uh, topic areas for us to kind of walk through this notion of as you're thinking about a new year, what are some of the ways in which you could be uh, planning your your new year and trying to improve your your in the areas of personal finance? Absolutely. It's about resolutions. And, you know, if I ask if you ask 10 people how they do with last year's resolutions, if they can't tell you what the resolution was, it's probably because they didn't write it down <laughs> and they didn't they didn't take any positive steps. So this article got my attention because it's very consistent with things that I say and it starts out with create a budget. So the article had me from hello. Right. I mean, yeah, right. You know, that's pretty much <laughs> that's pretty much where I think Very everybody important. should start. Um, you know, even in, in my view, and you, know, you guys can disagree with me, happens almost every day. Um, <laughs> um, if you don't start by knowing where your money is going, I think we're going to be on the same page. No, yeah. I'm, I'm just joking around. But it, my point of view with creating a budget, it's, it's for everyone. It's for people with very minimal needs and just, or maybe just a young couple starting out. And it's also for people who may have created critical mass, have plenty of uh, financial resources in retirement. Because I believe if you don't tell your money where to go and track your money, it's going to find a place to go. And it may not be in line with your priorities. So number one resolution, according to this article, which is titled New Year's, financial resolutions under the uh, financial planning tab at Charles Schwab says to create a budget. So uh, that sounds like, you know, we, we talk about the, the following is paid pro. Gosh, sorry, bumped something on my keyboard here. Um, it sounds like a, um, the B word, it sounds like something very challenging and difficult. And it sounds like discipline and 
um, all kinds of things I don't want to do. Um, you know, those are when, good things. <laughs> no, you know what I mean though. So uh, that's my point. Ultimately, when you think about uh, budget, uh, it doesn't necessarily have to become this like list of don'ts. Um, you know, I think that's the the point I'm trying to make, Jeff. Is that right? You know, sometimes it's a matter of saying this is what your uh, plan is, your permission is, your your agreement with yourself or your spouse or whatever that this is the game plan we're going to run into for how we're going to spend our money. And it's not to say that, you know, things, life happens and things change and you may need to reassess, but to have sort of a, an intent, you know, we know if we're more intentional, we tend to be better at the outcome we, we get. So this is just an attempt to be intentional and to be deliberate of right. where's our money going to go. And, yeah. um, you know, if possible to do the, the the old adage pay yourself first you know um yeah, definitely so that you have that. Some, if you don't you know years pass and money comes and goes and we spend to our capacity and sometimes more and uh, we're better off if we do some intentional you know structuring around yeah. this we end up with uh the capacity to have a little bit left over for you know or started with uh going toward savings and investment Yep. It's about matching those priorities to your actual spending. And I think if you don't have a written budget, you can use an app, you can use Quicken, you can use pieces of paper, you can use Excel, whatever works for you. But if you don't have that budget, um, so Scott, I want, I want to ask you, because you, I hear you talking about this all the time, when clients or prospects are starting their financial plan and you're starting to put it together, what percentage of people roughly underestimate how much they spend? Uh, that's 99.9. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. When you said the B word, I thought you were going to talk about broccoli, but. Think about it the same other, way. Yeah. yeah. Right. Pretty much. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Every year I like to uh, review, I have like a little savings spreadsheet and if you have a spouse, it helps. But I mean, uh, did I get as much as the employer plan as I wanted to? Uh, do you have an HSA? Uh, IRA or Roth? Um, depending if you qualify for the Roth, uh, are you giving to the kids uh, or grandkids 529 or ABLE accounts? There's so many little pockets. And then maybe you're saving some money on the taxable side for emergencies. But I try to look at it every year. I, I shoot for my goals and if possible, try to boost it every year. But I think for what Jeff's talking about, pay yourself first. That's the first place to look at. That's the first thing you really want to tackle for the next year. Yeah, those are good tidbits, um, too, as you're talking about it, Scott. Um, there were other things besides budgeting as well in that um, thinking about, you know, just sort of getting getting a handle on where you are financially. Yep. I like some of the other uh, topics they, they talked about in this article as well. Yep. So number one, get your budget together, know where your money's going. And then resolution number two, according to this article on Schwab.com, is manage your debt. First of well, all... Just right, before you, you go into the debt, uh, Jeff, I'm sorry. Sure. Um, just the, the idea of um, sort of tallying up, what do I own? What do I owe? Um, a net worth uh, statement. <clears throat> if you do this from time to time, I know Mike Perna was really big on talking about this over the years. Just by having that um, comparative list from, you know, mm -hmm. periodically that you review, you see your incremental progress, whether it's reducing your debts or growing your wealth. Um, it, it can really be um, incentivizing to say, oh, hey, I'm making progress. And it, it can feed on itself that it gets you energetic about the topic. So, you know, that's part of that that I'm, I'm driving at. And then, you know, uh, we often talk about um, have some emergency money, have some savings. This is certainly important as well, right? It, it's Absolutely. not just about that long-term investment, which clearly, you know, we're mindful of and in, in our profession, that's something we talk about a lot. But um, the day-to-day, -day, uh, one of the really peace of mind things is that um, if you have to keep going to the credit card at 15, 20, whatever percent, um, it's, it's really more challenging to recover from that and to overcome that. If you have a reserve, even though it might only be getting, you know, 
three, four percent or whatever it is, which these days sounds pretty, pretty good to me. But uh, as a result, you know, for for cash kind of money, but you're you're not. It's not costing you that kind of money, so that you have that reserve, a little bit of resources. It's a lot less stressful when you're dealing with um, the unexpected tires or um, repairs on a car, for example, or whatever it might be. Right? I heard they're expensive. I've heard that too. <laughs> <laughs> but you make a good point, Chris. You know, just like a business has financial statements, I think every household should have. A couple of financial statements as a you know as a foundation one is the budget and two yeah. is that net worth statement you know your assets your liabilities equal your net worth yeah and it's a great way i think that's what you were referring to scott when you're talking about at the end of the year you look at those buckets of money right and right. See if you're making progress well the, the net worth is a little more positive makes you feel good hopefully if things are moving <laughs> in the right direction yeah but, seeing how much you spent at chipotle and your budget may may not be as positive but they are definitely <laughs> interrelated They are interrelated. <laughs> yeah, very and true. one of those items on your uh net worth statement is your liabilities or your debt which is <coughs> the number the <clears throat> number two topic of your new year's resolutions if you have debt um you know maybe <clears throat> this is the year that you want to try to deal with that debt make a plan um you know, there's some people out there, there's lots of, for managing debt, consolidating debt, paying off debt, there are as, as many of opinions as there are uh, financial planners sometimes. Yeah, that's true. And, you know, people look at it from paying the highest interest rate off first. There's some folks who say pay off the smallest debt to build momentum, have like a momentum theory where you're yeah. getting your debt paid off. So you're feeling positive about it and you're sticking with it. But whatever it is, make a plan and start addressing yeah, and, and when you look at how these play out in terms of the, uh, the what, which way works better, right. um, it, it's not hugely different in reality. I mean, they both work well. It's a matter of like, what's gonna work for you better? Right. You know, what's gonna give you the um, sustained enthusiasm for driving that debt lower? I think one of the challenges um, we run into a lot and uh, Scott, I'd love to have you comment about this. Um, it, it's super easy to think uh, if I've got credit card debt, I'm just going to rotate between credit cards and try to, you know, jump from zero interest to zero interest. And I, I've seen more often than not that become a trap for people. Um, just comment about that a little bit. Uh, yeah, we've seen it. Uh, people build up <clears throat> credit cards. Uh, there's a lot of uh, dangers in those zero percent. So if you make <clears throat> a payment uh, on the agreement that they have, then all of a sudden you're you're paying a whopper of a fine mm -hmm. fees, and it comes back to you. And it's just, I mean, occasionally it, it, it may make sense. You know, if someone is really consistent yeah. and can be disciplined and, and work that. But that's just not typical. There are a lot of pitfalls in there. Yeah, uh, you know? it's yeah, it's not it's not the um, it's not that it can never work. It's just be be very hesitant to do it because as much as it seems like it's going to be, uh, oh, I'm going to get away with the zero interest rate. Um, at some point, that rate ends, right. and uh, you can, in some cases, even get you know retro. Um, on the on the interest right right where right. the you know, you know all that zero interest what turns out to be it's been back it's just been waiting for you um if you go beyond a certain point and then yeah, yeah, so, kind of a mental uh a break uh and i'm, I'm not going to take care of it. it's not as urgent right now because it's at zero percent which really isn't the case you really need to be tackling that and you know as much as um at certain times it can be like well i'll just get a new one Right. And maybe that's true for a time, but it, after a, a certain number of credit cards, you may end up not getting those offers anymore. Sure. You know, so and the so banks anyway, know, the banks know this. It. It's part of their strategy. I mean, they <clears throat> give away things without an expectation of having earnings. So they know most yeah. people will not pay that 0% off within the six months or whatever the time period is. Yeah. So, you know, the first um, thing to do when managing debt is to stop creating more debt. We should say that. And I love this strategy. Um, you know, when you tell people, all right, you maybe you should 
uh, eliminate your credit cards or cut some credit cards up or stop using them. I love the strategy of saying, okay, keep one credit card because of all the reasons that you told me for an emergency, for renting a car, for all this. But put it, freeze it in a block of ice and put it in the freezer so you won't use it in a whim. You're going to have to think about it. You're going to have to defrost it or break it open before you use it. And maybe it'll delay your your necessary purchase that you have to have this very moment. Boy, that's a, uh, that's, that's a commitment to, to get serious about it. Um, I think it's very challenging sometimes when, you know, the people who are creating the debt, uh, oftentimes are people who have a real strain in terms of their, their, their capacity for income, uh, while, you know, maybe having a family and lots of expenses. And we know how inflation has been, you know, it's not, it's not as though it's an easy thing to do. I think sometimes though, it does mean hard decisions. And, uh, sometimes that's, um, things that we've taken on that we really just can't afford. Uh, whether it's buying a house too soon or, you know, buying too expensive a car or, um, you know, some, some men are living beyond our means that, uh, we think we should be able to do, or maybe we're accustomed to being able to do, but circumstances don't allow for it. And it, and it can be, that's really hard, you know, but then granted, you know, conceded it is hard. Uh, but, um, it's, it's harder to be deeper and deeper in debt and um, better to tackle it sooner and, and make adjustments so that you can uh, kind of move to your, 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 what you might aspire to over time. There are definitely those people that, you know, you can understand why they're doing it. In many cases, it's to put food on the table or gas in the car. Right. But we also know uh, many people who have high incomes, uh, you know, a big shovel for money, but they just outspend whatever they make. Yeah, just a lack of discipline in some lack cases. Lack of discipline, yep. yeah. So that is certainly <clears throat> something that I think will be on a lot of New Year's resolution <clears throat> lists come a yeah. couple days, right? So Right, right. And, uh, you know, we're happy to work with people. We work with our clients who have debt issues and develop a plan and help keep them accountable, not in a negative way, but in a positive way to help them reach their goals. So it... It can be done, but it does take, as both of you have said, some focus and discipline. If that's important to you, you can get it done. Let's um, let's go on to number three. Okay, resolution number three is optimize your portfolio. And in this one, they're talking about your overall strategy, diversification, taxes, all the things that we all deal with every day. You know, um uh, next uh, segment um, that we do is going to be very much on this topic of um, portfolio planning and, and the idea if you need help in the process, uh, this time of year, we offer um, a complimentary uh, resource for people who might be benefited from some assistance in uh, thinking about how should their portfolio be designed and structured. So we'll have that opportunity and uh, if you should want to take advantage of that um, complimentary offer, we'll, we'll talk about it more in, in another segment. But uh, you can certainly uh, connect with us right now at, at amrfinancial.com and uh, just let us know. Uh, you can give us a call, 508-771-8900. Leave us a voicemail. Just let us know that it's your interest to um, have the opportunity to... Um, Get a review. Take a have a have a second set of eyes. Look at your your portfolio and and maybe make some adjustments uh, if you think it's appropriate. You know, after you get some counsel, maybe there'll be some jewels of information, some mm -hmm. tidbits that you'll say, "Oh, I never thought of it that way," or uh, whatever. Sometimes we'll go into this in more detail, so I won't keep. Yeah, let's uh, let's let's put <clears throat> resolution three to the side, and we'll do our next segment on it. <clears throat> Yeah. Um, so number four is prepare for the une unexpected. Scott, when you do the financial plans and and run their projections, um, I know you go through a lot of these unexpected. You want to share with us some of the things that you <clears throat> challenge people's plans with? Trust, stress tests, I guess you call it. Uh, sure. So, I mean, uh, as we're going through cash flows, whether you're still working or retired, we're, we're kind of looking at kind of the net number at the end of the year. So. For simplicity, if you're, if you're retired, like um, how much you're drawing out of the 
of a portfolio out of your savings every year. So taking into account your Social Security, pensions, uh, maybe RMDs. Um, so if you're taking an extra thirty thousand dollars out, maybe we want to set two, three years worth of that. You know, the number may change very well, but to set that aside. That's kind of your emergency account. If you're a working person in those years, usually the number is three to six months. I usually think of it's if it's a, a two income household, maybe three months. If it's a one income household, six months. Um, and that's kind of just your everyday planning. And I think, Jeff, you are alluding to as we're building these plans, uh, how do we take an account for the real unexpected? So, right. For that Disability, way. long term care. Right. Um, you know, other things that are just really big, big nuts to crack, right? Right. You know, the big ones of death, start with that. If one of the sure. spouse were to pass away, how would it affect you folks long term? Um, so we're running uh, illustrations and projections for that. Can we pick up some term insurance to cover that for short term? Um, is there maybe something you can get through work for to cover it? Uh, same thing with disability. Whether yeah, just just before you go out to disability, Scott, it, you know, the first thing is if you have the wealth that you that the people you love will be uh, without need financially, then we don't need the insurance. Right. Sure, sure. But for most of us, particularly while we're in our working years, that's not the case. You know, if if uh, we might have debts, we might have, um, you know, the loss of income. Uh, whether it's mortgages or anticipation of college expenses or whatever, there are right. things that we might say, well, if I'm not here, I want to make sure that there's resources to be available for those things. So term insurance is generally a preferred way to do it. It's temporary. The idea is we're going to create the wealth eventually, and we won't need the insurance forever. Right. Uh, that's not the only way to do it. And there are times when other types of products make more sense if we have uh, trying to replace a pension or something like that, we might need a permanent product. We're trying to think of an estate need, different kind of product. But anyway, all right. So just wanted to throw that in. No, no, good point. Yeah, I mean, we're, we're running illustrations just to, to show you uh, what would happen where you pass away today. And I'm taking into account that you do have Social Security or you do have a pension, or you do have retirement accounts. But is, is that going to last or to maybe yeah, mm -hmm. right. on top of that? So, uh, And then disability, if you're in your working years, do you have short term disability? Do you have long term disability? And that's a whole discussion on uh, own occupation type disability and specifics like that. But we should make sure that people are covered and what would happen if you had a long term disability effect, which statistically more likely to happen than death. So it's usually overlooked but it usually can be an important piece. can be really costly too yeah right. and uh we know that you know healthcare needs are one of the big drivers of bankruptcy right so right and the uh, number this, one actually this yeah. ultimately is you know part of that equation disability and and if it's in retirement it's probably less about disability than long-term care uh which later in life can really be a devastating financial expense um, we won't go into that in depth uh, today, though we, we probably will in a future uh, episode. We do. It's we have a, we've been talking right. about for a while that we want to do. And then um, just in the interest of winding down, we're, we're getting close to the end of our segment here, uh, Jeff. Um, was resolution number five. Yeah, protect your estate, meaning your estate plan with a will and healthcare proxy and living will and perhaps a trust. And that's a we've we've done many episodes on estate planning and the needs of it. And um, <clears throat> I know we're out of time for this segment, Chris. I'm going to post the link to this article on the podcast, so if people want to follow that up. But Great article. That was a lot of a lot of good stuff, good suggestions. And this time of year is an important time of year for people to be thinking about these things. Yep, and write it down. Make a list. Get it done and turn to professionals when we can be of assistance. Just going to say the same thing. If you need help, don't be hesitant to, to don't hesitate to reach out. Uh, whether it's us or somebody else, professionals can be a real resource. Just find the ones that uh, may be a fiduciary or have your best interests in the process. With that, gentlemen, thanks. We'll be back uh, with another segment in the future. Until next time, keep striving for something more.
Thank you for listening to Something More with Chris Boyd. Call us for help, whether it's financial planning, portfolio management, insurance concerns, or those quality of life issues that make the money matters matter. Whatever's on your mind, visit us at amrfinancial.com or call us toll free at 866-771-8901 or send us your questions to radio at amrfinancial.com. You're listening to Something More with Chris Boyd, Financial Talk Show. Asset Management Resources LLC and J. Christopher Boyd, CFP, provide investment advice on an individual basis to clients only. Proper advice depends on a complete analysis of all facts and circumstances. The information given on this program is in the nature of general financial comments and cannot be relied upon as pertaining to your specific situation. AMR LLC cannot guarantee that using the information from this show will generate profits or ensure freedom from loss. Listeners should consult their own financial advisors or conduct their own due diligence before making any financial decisions.